And greetings from Orangeburg, South Carolina on the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN+. Plus. We are on the campus of South Carolina State University as the Bulldogs at 2-3 and three play host to the Golden Eagles of Tennessee Tech at 1-4. and four. Hello, everybody. I am Tyler Cup, along with the coach, Demetrius Davis, where it is the final non-conference tune-up before South Carolina State heads into the MEAC. Well, every game is important, Tyler, but going into the MEAC, you want to be hitting on all cylinders and a great Tennessee Tech team is coming in today. Their schedule don't reflect to it, but they've lost some very good teams. So, South Carolina State really going to have their work cut out for them today. Let's take a look at our cricket impact players of the game. We start with Tennessee Tech. Jack Quez McGowan, only a sophomore, but he is one of the team leaders on defense. 33 stops. That's second on the team at a Valdosta, Georgia. For the Bulldogs of South Carolina State, it is the sensational Justin Smith-Brown, listen to this, five catches, three touchdowns. He's the big-time highlight player for the Bulldogs. Well, that might be the definition of efficient. Justin Smith-Brown definitely had his coming-out party last week, so it's, we're excited to see what he brings today. And we take a look at Oliver Buddy Pugh in his last season with the South Carolina State Bulldogs with a record of 148-90 in his 22nd season. Of course, the winningest head football coach here at South Carolina State. Buddy emphasized the importance of getting to 500 and getting confidence going into MEAC play. Well, he knew that the early season woes and all the stuff that was going on with similar a little bit, little bit if we can just get some wins here towards the end of uh, non-conference play. So, uh, he's trying to get them going and trying to get them going quick. We take a look at the other sideline. Coach Dwayne Alexander, 17-40 and 40 in his sixth season campaign here at Tennessee Tech. Leads the Big South Ohio Valley Conference in total defense and passing defense, allowing just 323 total defensive yards. Look at that pass defense, 156. His passing offense of South Carolina State has been pretty impressive the last couple weeks. That's going to be an interesting clash today. Well, that might be the tail of the tape. That might be a line that we have to look at early in the game to see that what their passing defense can do against South Carolina State passing offense. And Coach Dwayne Alexander was very complimentary and very respectful towards Coach Buddy Pugh in his press conference this week. I actually caught that this week on YouTube. They post that on their uh, athletics page and said he was excited about meeting Coach Pugh and everything he's done. And he said he did a little reading on South Carolina State. And he was excited about this matchup. The first all-time meeting between the Golden Eagles of Tennessee Tick and South Carolina State. We are ready to kick it off here in the OBG. And we are underway. High end over end kick will be caught by South Carolina State. So we'll see the Bulldogs on offense for the first time today. And a big return out across the 30 to the 36. Still on his feet to the 40. And a great return there for the Bulldogs to get him in great field position to kick things off. Great return there. And when you're talking about starting off the game, you know, that kickoff return, I think sometimes people forget how important. That's the first play a live play of the game and you want to get positive yards on your kickoff return. Shamonte Burgess on the return at uh, Lake City, South Carolina. The redshirt freshman. I tell you, you're going to be hearing that a lot, Coach Demetrius Davis. Freshman, redshirt freshman, sophomores, a young Bulldog team with a lot of talent. And it looks like this one, however, might be coming back. Yeah, holding is going to bring this one back to the 10-yard line. So the Bulldogs will have it. Instead of the great return, they'll be knocked back as you take a look at Corey Fields Jr., the graduate student at a Hollywood, South Carolina, over 600 yards passing for the Bulldogs this season, seven touchdowns, three interceptions. He's trying to get that completion percentage a little higher. Right now it's at 56. Puts a man in motion. Corey's going to keep it and not get much there. He's going to be brought down far side. Yeah, that was Corey on the zone read there. Great pull there, but a great defense stop there by Tennessee Tech. This defense is tops in their conference in the Big South, Ohio Valley, that two conferences merged so they can keep their playoff bid. It's been known as the OVC for many years, of course. Corey Fields going to swing it out to the back. And a nice run here at the 20. 25 still on his feet down the sideline. Midfield, he could go all the way. That's a touchdown. South Carolina State, Jaward Howell. House call. 
Well, we talked last week. We talked about being able to throw a short pass to go for 80, 90 yards. That's a quarterback's dream to be able to start the game with a five-yard pass and you get 95 yards or whatever the, the amount of yards is in stats. <laughs> <laughs> Jawarn Howe, you know, I thought he might have stepped out there around the 30 when he was pressured but broke free down the near side and no one was going to catch him. What an impressive talent, Jawarn Howe. That's his second receiving touchdown of the season. Spot kick, and that is good. Seven to nothing. The Bulldogs strike first blood over Tennessee Tech as we take a look at the cricket replay. And one stat you said earlier, Tyler, he is a freshman, which means he was doing that run last year against Jokers in high school that were walking the halls <laughs> going to biology class. <laughs> yeah, see, I thought he might have stepped out right there. He stayed in bounds. Great awareness. And turned on the afterburners. Boy, no one was even close. Jawarn Howe, what a talented young man he is. And he has really been a spark for this Bulldog offense as they jump on the board. First drive of the game. That wasn't a drive. That was just a play. <laughs> second play of the game. Second play of the game. But if you're an offensive coordinator, that's, that's a dream to be able to say that. Second play of the game from 90 yard plus. Uh, we got a touchdown. Hal, of course, out of Mooresville, North Carolina. Beautiful part of North Carolina near Davidson. And the Bulldogs will kick it away. So this will be Maxi on Cobb. And we'll see the Golden Eagle offense for the first time today. And again, the math major, Buddy Pugh, was big about numbers. It, 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 it was an emphasis in the press conference talking about two and three and the difference between that and three and three. And, you know, starting things off going into MEAC play. I know it's just a simple number, but that really seemed to stand out for Buddy Pugh this week. Well, and I think sometimes we get caught up in records, which um, records at this time of year really don't matter because whoever's going to win the game is who's the best team that day. You don't have to be the best team for the year, just the best team that day. So records are good, but you want to start getting momentum, getting ready to go into conference play. So 7 to nothing, South Carolina State leads Tennessee Tech, this Golden Eagle offense. You know, a couple of storylines for them as we see the true freshman, Jordan Potts, out of Powell, Tennessee, is getting the start today. We do expect to see Hayes Gibson, the sophomore out of Des Moines, Iowa, but this team has really struggled at the quarterback position. Their fourth different QB playing so far this season. Two receivers right, one on the near side. And it's going to be a throw far side for Potts. And that is completed. And that's going to be a first down for the Golden Eagles. Quick pitch and catch that time for Bradley Clark, the leading receiver this year with over 200 yards receiving. We have Bradley Clark out of Lakeland, Florida, the senior. So a quick pitch and catch as you take a look at Jordan Potts and the Tennessee Tech offense. They have a very talented offensive line led by Trevor Stevens on the preseason watch list for the conference out of Woodstock, Georgia, at left tackle. Watch for him. And they're very big across the front. 6'4", 6'4", 6'3". as it looks like we have a equipment issue here. And I think we're good to go. So back out of the shotgun, two backs, two receivers. After the first down pitch and catch for the Golden Eagles. A lot of motion here. They move Clark to the slot and put one of the backers at tight end. And it's a handoff straight ahead and he's ripped down for next to no gain on the play. Jared Kirksey out of Daniel High School. I think that's the first time we've called his name this season, Coach, and making his presence felt out of Clemson. And that was a great job of him squeezing on his own play and staying square and being able to get off and make a great uh, uh, tackle for a loss there, which as a defensive line coach, that's what you want, TFLs. Second down and 11. Double tights to the far side. A lot of motion on this Golden Eagle offense. The freshman Jordan Potts. Claps his hands, he's ready. Gonna throw this one, and that is caught by Clark again. And he gets it out across the 45 to the 46 yard line. Another thing about this Tennessee Tech offense, they haven't really got going 
but they do have some talented guys. I talked about the offensive line, but in the backfield, they got a young man by the name of Marcus Snyde. He's a transfer from Montana, set records with Montana in touchdowns and yards. Well, and you follow Montana over the years. You know, Montana's have some really good football teams and good football players up there. Back to pass his pots. I think there was movement as he throws this one incomplete. I do not see a flag, but it appeared that there was movement up there. No, no flag. That brings up fourth down in Tennessee Tech. We'll kick it away. So South Carolina State gets the stop. Golden Eagles kick it away. Golden Eagles averaging just 8.8 .8 points a game. That's not going to get it done. They have really struggled offensively, but they did pick up a first down on their first drive. They boom it away here. High end over end punt. Fair caught at the 18 yard line. So we'll step aside and the Bulldogs will get the football for the second time this afternoon. They lead it 7 0. Take a look at Tennessee Tech. Over the years, 0-3 on the road this season. Of course, 1-4 overall, but coach, the last 20 seasons, the Golden Eagles, 25-86 and 86 away from Cookville. Mm. Well, I think what you want to try to do in that situation is try to schedule as many games as possible at home. <laughs> uh, but I guess if you're South Carolina State, you want that stat to be 0-4 at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And if you're a Tennessee Tech fan, you want it to be 1-3 at the end of the day. So South Carolina State, after the 90 Plus yard touchdown by Jawarin Howell. They get it back. And nothing doing on that play. I think that was Howell again. Getting the carry straight ahead and not much doing there. You know, we talked about the struggles of this Tennessee Tech offense. Well, you look at the defense as we take a look at the cricket replay. As that defensive line just collapsed on him. That's Aaron Swafford, the leading tackler for the Golden Eagles on the stop. Five interceptions, two fumble recoveries. So they've forced some turnovers. Only 10 sacks defensively, but the defense can only do so much in creating opportunities for your offense. Well, and you don't know how many times the offense has turned the ball over. So mm. to win the turnover margin, you just have to get more than you get over. So it's, it's an interesting stat to see how that uh, translates. Little pitch far side to Nigel Johnson. Gets some of that lost yardage back and then some. Third down and eight. Upcoming for the Bulldogs. Looked at Nigel in pregame warm-ups, and I tell you, on this roster, they have him at 6'5", and he's every bit of 6'5". Oh, he's a tall human. <laughs> he's a tall human being. 
a tall target. I mean, that's something that, as a quarterback, when you can just throw the ball up and have somebody that's six five with that wingspan to catch it, it's got to be a gift. Here's Corey back to pass and finds Nigel at the 30. Looks like he got the first down there. So Nigel Johnson, we're talking about him making his presence felt. Nice little catch for the first. Nigel Johnson, a true freshman at a Sumter Crestwood High School. I'll tell you, Crestwood High having one of their best years in program history at the high school ranks. Got a big one against Camden next week. That's for the region title. They're in class 3A. Out of the shotgun, Corey Fields in this Bulldog offense. Puts a man in motion. Howell's going to get it straight ahead, and down he goes after a short gain. You know, something we talked about last week in the game against Virginia Lynchburg, Buddy Pugh and the offensive coaches told us down on the field that they really want to emphasize uh, running the football and uh, kind of having a presence there and making the defense respect the run more than they have in years past with the Bulldogs. Well, we often compare it to a heavyweight bout where you're just getting body blows. You know, you run the football and, you know, you only get two yards here, you get three yards here. But as the, the contest goes, those three and four yards turn to five and six yard games. Second down and nine, little tunnel screen, not much there. That was Justin Smith-Brown trying to get him involved somehow. Third down and long after a very short game for Justin Smith-Brown. 6'1", 190 at a Cocoa, Florida. And that was a great fit there by Tennessee Tech's uh, Gerald uh, Kilgore there. And came down here, and that's what you want as a safety, to see a safety come down here and make a little short game uh, for the tackle. We'll call it third and seven, 8.55. Here left to go in the first. The Bulldogs have jumped on top seven to nothing. They've got the ball again. A little swing pass, and Howell is upended by the Tennessee Tech defenders. I tell you, this uh, this Golden Eagle defense, they are quick to the ball. That was uh, Jiron Gilmore. Yeah, if you watch Jiron here, mm. uh, great timing there. I guess South Carolina State was trying to go back to the well with that swing pass mm -hmm. that we just uh, we took to the house for a touchdown previously. Great job there by Tennessee Tech. So Maxion Cobb will kick it away. And one of the notes I came across this week for the Bulldogs special teams was Maxion Cobb having a really good year. 22 punts, 38-yard average. And this is another good one here. But it will take a Golden Eagle bounce at the 35. And that's where Tennessee Tech will put it in play. Let's send it a break. 7 to nothing. Bulldogs lead Tennessee Tech on the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN+.
Back to the OBG on the campus of South Carolina State University. The Bulldogs on top of Tennessee Tech, 7-0. It's the Golden Eagles' second offensive possession of the game. They did pick up a first down the last time they had it, then had to boot it away. And here's the delayed handoff here. A nice bit of running for the back for the Golden Eagles, and that is Marcus Knight. Only got about 170 yards on the season off 38 carries, but talking about him, he's a graduate student as we take a look at the cricket replay. Good hole there, good vision. Montana transfer set school records at Montana before transferring here. Had one of his seasons cut short to a ankle injury. Back on the field here, look at this. Three backs in the backfield, two receivers. A lot of different formations so far for Tennessee Tech. Handoff near side, and that is Pagis with a flag down. He picked up the first down, but this could be coming back. Yeah, that's normally in the neighborhood of holding there. Justin Pagis, a stocky back, 5'9", 169, a sophomore out of Birmingham, Alabama. which is interesting. You talked about the three-back set, which is kind of traditionally wishbone-ish. I mm -hmm. uh, really yeah. hadn't seen a whole lot of wishbone out of the gun. So that was kind of a wishbone gun deal. I've been seeing that in the high school game, that right. wishbone, flexbone gun. As you take a look at Coach Dwayne Alexander, you know, we've always talked about Buddy Pugh being very prideful of coaching here because he's a Graduate of South Carolina State. Well, Dwayne Alexander, an 89 graduate of Tennessee Tech. It always means a little more for you when you go back to your alma mater. Mm -hmm. So an illegal block was the call. Didn't quite see that, did you? I didn't see it. I don't know if it was holding or it might have been out on the perimeter. So second down and long for the Golden Eagles. Three receivers. They put the tight end in motion a lot so far. Rolls to his right and got a wide open night in the flat. Picks up that lost yardage and then some before he's brought down just shy of the 40 yard line. So Marcus Knight out in the flat. Gets a nice gain and it brings up a crucial third down for the Golden Eagles as we take a look at the cricket replay. Well, I tell you what, Tennessee Tech at this moment should be happy with starting a true freshman on the road and having Jordan Potts come out and seems to have control of the game being on the road for his first start. Golden Eagles only 36% on third down, 30 of 83. See if they can convert here with a third and five. Hard snap count for the freshman Potts. Back to pass, man in his face, gonna try to get this out tonight in the flat, can't do it. Yeah, tried to set the screen pass off tonight in the flat. Great job by South Carolina State coverage, South Carolina State defense of getting over there and getting off the field. So this Tennessee Tech offense continues to struggle. Total offense per game this season, just under 300 yards per game. And only scoring right at nine points a game. Their biggest point output this year was against Kennesaw State when they won 17 to seven. Oh, and that hit a Bulldog player picked up by Tennessee Tech. He's going to the end zone to score and he's in. Oh, are they gonna say he's out at the one? What's the call here? I didn't see a signal from the official. Well, if it's a muff punt, punt, I don't know if you can advance. That was, yeah, uh, that was the other thought I had, Coach. If you can't advance it, then Tennessee Tech's definitely going to have the football, but are they going to be at the one? Is it a touchdown, or are they going to be inside the 30? That's what they're talking about right now. So I might have jumped the gun a little bit, but the white hat has given the explanation. It's going to be interesting to see the call to see if the muff can be advanced or not, but I guess we'll wait. What's interesting is that they let him play through. Oh. Okay, so we will give the explanation when we come back as you take a look at the cricket replay. Looks like the Bulldogs will still have the ball on the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN+.
Back in the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN Plus. The coach is going to break down what happened here, the explanation. The officials let the play go through, but here's what happened. Well, if you can see, Tennessee Tech player actually pushed uh, South Carolina State player into the ball, which if the ball is touched by Tennessee Tech, the ball is down, or if you are forced into the ball, the ball is down. So the official came back and made the ruling that uh, South Carolina State touched the ball because they were forced to touch the ball. It does appear that that's the right call as they discussed it. Very thorough explanation. But again, I appreciate the explanation, but even more letting them play through and not blowing that dead because for all we know, football's a game of inches. Could have gone the other way and it could have been a touchdown for Tennessee Tech. We're in the age of instant replay. More officials are letting the play play sure. because once the play go through, you blow it dead there, then you don't have anything to review. Well said. So yeah. if you let it play, then you can always go back and review the play that was playing. So that's a huge break for South Carolina State. I mean, that would have been a jolt of momentum for the Golden Eagles and Tennessee Tech. South Carolina State, of course, has played very well defensively. They scored on their second play of the game with Jawarn Howe and that 90-plus yard touchdown reception down the near side. Officials still talking this one over, but they did make the ruling that the Bulldogs will have the football. Well, we assume they made the ruling. Maybe he just gave us the call that he was going to review, but we feel like uh, the Tennessee Tech player actually did push the South Carolina State player into the ball, so uh, it should be South Carolina uh, State ball first and 10. Hmm. So they review this one here. And we're we'll going to get the official word. Overcast day here in Orangeburg. There was a little nip this morning, but it went away. And that's uh, not as cooler as it was this morning. I don't like it as long as it's taking. Normally when it takes long, it's not good news. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we got a problem with our official mic there. You a good lip reader? What do you think? Uh, it looked like the call was overturned. That, oh, no. Uh, it is going to be first and ten. Uh, yeah, so South Carolina State will have it back. Yeah. <clears throat> so, after all of that, <laughs> Bulldogs will have it. Whatever the explanation was, it was a pretty good dissertation. <laughs> <laughs> a lot longer than uh, the player was giving him the business. That play that went viral many years ago, as there is a little pitch and catch there, nothing doing on the far side of the field for South Carolina State. You know, we were talking during the break about this Tennessee Tech defense and how they are just ball hawks. They are ball hawks, and they close so fast to the ball. You know, a ball in the air, you think it's a play you can get three or four yards, and they just close and get guys on the ground quick. Out of the shotgun, three receivers right, none left. It's going to be a handoff far side to Jawarn Howe, trying to find a crease, can't do it. It's going to be a tackle for loss on the play. So third down and long upcoming. You know, we were talking to the offensive coaches, and I asked what are some of the players that kind of jumped out on film, and they didn't hesitate. They said 55. That is Daniel Rickert, who's got seven tackles for loss this year for the Golden Eagles. Haven't called his name yet, but he was definitely in on that scrum, right. that uh, dog pile there on the far side of the field, third down and 11. I've been impressed with their defensive line as a committee of getting to the ball and it's hard to, to single out a guy because it's 11 hats to, it seems to be around every ball. Fields with good protection, and that is caught at the 40-yard line. Move those chains. South Carolina State, Jordan Smith. What a great play here. I, I'm impressed. Uh, we get this replay here. You see a quick, quick play here. You see him stand in the pocket and just deliver a strike. We're going to call that a strike down the field. And great uh, pass, great catch, great completion, first down. Beautiful spiral, but how about that offensive line up front? Johnson, Ford, Brown, Jr., Taste, Umarin did a great job blocking up front. Here's the handoff straight ahead, and down he goes inside the 40, just shy of the 35-yard line. So the Bulldogs are in business inside Tennessee Tech territory. And 
Jawarn Howell has gotten a majority of the carries. He will so today because we understand that both Casey Fields and Tyler Smith are out today due to injury. We know that Josh Shaw is available and also Demetri Simmons will be available as well. But Demetri, or excuse me, Jawarn Howell getting the majority of the carries thus far for the Bulldogs. Well, how quickly do things change? We talked about the Quarter, the running back room being a room that was deep, you know, mm -hmm. but now you still have two good running backs there that you can put in the game uh, with Jawan Howard and uh, with Demetri Simmons and some of the other guys, but you got to make sure you don't get somebody hurt uh, because you know, you're thin in that room. Yeah, not as deep as they once were as what do we got here? Was there a flag down? It was an incomplete pass. Fields, I think, was looking for Smith again over the middle. No, no flag. It's going to be third down and six. Looks like Josh Shaw has checked into the game for the Bulldogs at running back. Just called his name, and there he is. Three receivers to the far side. Keyshawn Tony in at tight end. They move Nigel Johnson down to the near side. Fields was looking at Johnson. Now he's going to be chased out of the pocket, throws this deep, and that is incomplete. Boy, Johnson got two hands on it, almost had a crack at that one. What a throw by Fields under pressure, and it brings up fourth down. And you can see Nyquan Washington on the carry there. We, I've noticed number five being a, around a lot of the balls in the air for Tennessee Tech. So great stop there by Tennessee Tech of getting uh, South Carolina State to stop a little momentum. So fourth down, and the Bulldogs elect to punt this. They're kind of in no man's land there. A little too far for Gavin Zimmerman to kick this one. And they're just deep enough to punt. So Cobb will try to pin back the Golden Eagles. It's a low snap, drops it, picks it back up. And that is a high kick. Fair caught at the 15-yard line. And that's where the Golden Eagles will put it in play. So a good job by the Bulldogs special teams to pin them inside their own 20. 7-0. Bulldogs lead it over Tennessee Tech with 345 remaining here in the first. So we'll see Jordan Potts come back out on offense. We understand that we will probably see Hayes Gibson at some point today. Listening to Coach Dwayne Alexander's press conference, he did say that Potts will start. Gibson will eventually see some playing time. Still a battle for that quarterback position. And it's going to be a handoff near side. This is Pagese. Got some room at the 20. 25 still on his feet. And that's a first down run. Just shy of the 30. Looks like he's right there at the first down yard marker, and they give it to him. Yeah, great run there. You can see them running what they call the truck play when you pull both guards, so you pull your uncovered uh, offensive lineman. Uh, they get lineman out front, good fits. Great run there by Geese. Good execution by that line blocking downfield through the creases. Four receivers, four down linemen for the Bulldogs. Potts being pressured, going to throw this on the run. Got his man at the 40, still on his feet. And he gets across the 45 to midfield. So another first down catch and run for the Golden Eagles. I've been impressed with Potts now. Potts have made some plays of getting out of the pocket, getting the ball out of his hands, and being able to keep drives going. So and that's a true freshman on the road. Yeah. That's a plus plus. That was Jalal Dean, one of the few South Carolina players on this Tennessee Tech roster. Dean out of Williamson, South Carolina. That's Palmetto High School. Play action fake. Potts going to roll to his left, being chased. Flag is down. Throws this one incomplete. Mm. Flag is down in the backfield. You know, a lot of time when you see the quarterback kind of running around, right. that's more opportunities for the line to hold. More opportunity <laughs> to hold, or you might get a lineman down the field, but one of those two, nine out of ten times, going to happen the yep. longer the quarterback stay in the pocket. Mm -hmm. Or when he try to escape the pocket, I should say. So that will be an infraction on Tennessee Tech as it knocks them back. And for Golden Eagle fans watching on ESPN Plus, there is some talent on this offense. They just 
have not found a rhythm, just seems to be out of sync. And South Carolina State knows that all too well. They were pretty out of sync the first three games of the season. They've gotten in rhythm the last two games against the Citadel and Virginia Lynchburg. Here is Potts on the run, and he's brought down quickly, just shy of the 40. So it is a positive gain, but a long way to go on second down. Well, I tell you, we talked about the different quarterbacks that Tennessee Tech have started over the uh, first four or five games. But mm -hmm. now, when Tennessee Tech find their quarterback, they're going to be a team to reckon with. And Ohio Valley, Big South, everybody should be shaking in their boots now if they're hoping <laughs> that they don't find their guy. So second down and Santee, long way to go here, about 18 yards. Three receivers left, two right. Look at this, five wide. First time they've done this. Back to pass is Potts, going to fire this one, and that is, I think that's Dean again, going to be brought down just shy of the 45-yard line. Yeah, that is Jalal Dean. Let's take a look at the cricket replay once again. And one thing I've noticed, Coach, is even though this offensive line is very talented, the freshman quarterback is getting the ball out pretty quick. Right, he's making a decision and getting the ball out of his hand, which is big. Anytime you have a freshman, first of all, getting a freshman to stand in the pocket is tough. But when you have one that stands in the pocket and get the ball out of his hand quick, you're working with something. Soft coverage here for the Bulldogs on third down and 11. Potts claps his hands. He's ready. Here comes the pressure for SC State. And that is a wide open Pagis. Catches it at midfield. Still on his feet. And he hops into Bulldog territory at the 45. So a catch and run out of the flat. Well, did he get the first down? That looks very close from this angle. Well, they got the closed fist, which signifies fourth down. So it looked like it's mm. going to be fourth and one. Oh, wow. Fourth and short here. They're going to say he stepped out just shy. Let's take a look at the cricket replay. That was Pagis slipping out of the backfield. Oof, that is close. Going to go for it on fourth down. Fourth and two. Hard snap count. Trying to get the Bulldogs to jump. A lot of motion on this Bulldog defense. Trying to mix it up for the young freshman quarterback. And it's going to be a pitch out tonight. Gets the edge in the first down. Marcus Knight. What a great play call here. Went speed option to what we call the nub side, which is to the boundary. Great job by Potts of getting the pitch out of his hand. And that'll do it for the end of the first quarter. 7-0. South Carolina State leads Tennessee Tech on the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN+. guys doing? Learning that HBCUs are not only about networking, there's also secret handshakes. That's cap. HBCUs do not have secret handshakes, right? You mean this secret handshake? Cool. Wow. These guys are almost cricket 5G fast. We're kidding. There's no such thing as a secret handshake. Or is there? Whoa. That's how you do it. to South Carolina State University. Here you'll find unlimited possibilities for wherever you want your college career to take you. Since 1896, we've trained generations of scholars and leaders, building a legacy of excellence. Explore our stellar academic programs, including nuclear engineering, military science, biology, education, computer science, agribusiness, and more. Enjoy student-focused activities and organizations and discover your passion. Dare to be great. Enroll now and join our legacy of excellence at South Carolina State University. There is something greater than finishing first. True champions stand on principles. We fight for the right causes. We believe in the power of team, whether in rebound, receiving, or in research. In service and in sportsmanship. Only a few have what it really takes. We develop the talent. We unleash the potential. It all boils down to this. Now is the time. This is the place. We are MIAC.
There is something greater than finishing first. True champions stand on principles. We fight for the right causes. We believe in the power of team, whether in rebounding, receiving, or in research. In service and in sportsmanship. Only a few have what it really takes. We develop the talent. We unleash the potential. It all boils down to this. Now is the time. This is the place. We are MIAC. Back on the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN Plus, Tyler Cup, the coach Demetrius Davis. As we start the second quarter, we take a look at the cricket replay of that first down run. And boy, what a pitch made by the freshman quarterback Potts as he had Bulldogs coming for him and he got it out for the first down run. So, new set of downs for the Golden Eagles. They're inside Bulldog territory. Potts with a delayed handoff to Marcus Knight coming near side, dragging a tackler to the 36-yard line. And that was Aaron Smith on the stop, the leading tackler for the Bulldogs. The all MEAC first team selection, 27 tackles as we take a look at it here. Yep, once again, that's the pin and pull play we talked about. The truck play where you block everybody down and you get your offensive lineman out. And that's a tough play to fit for defense, but you can see Aaron Smith getting through and making the tackle. Let's listen here. When Aaron Smith wraps around you, he ain't letting go. <laughs> he is such a good textbook tackler, man. Second down and five. It's a delete handoff to Marcus Knight. Looked like a broken play. Knight keeps his feet churning for a first down inside the 30. That was a, kind of a weird play as we try to figure out what happened that time. Jordan Potts with kind of a delayed handoff. Looked like he was going to pull it out. And I tell you, uh, Ty, that's something that uh, a lot of offense has been playing around lately. It's kind of like a delayed zone play. <laughs> he which, was walking with right. the running back. So you don't know whether he's going to hand it or if he's going to pull it. So uh, great play, great play call, and great execution by Tennessee Tech. They teach you that in the RPO classes? That's, that's part of the RPO <laughs> class. That's like the first day. Yeah, that's the first day. The offseason RPO camps. I know about those. Here's Marcus Knight straight ahead and a nice tough physical run for the transfer out of Montana down to the 15-yard line. Boy, he is a special back. Sees the field well. You know, we've talked about yards after contact. The Bulldogs have done a good job of that this season, but look at this. A load to bring down. New set of downs for the Golden Eagles. It's going to be Marcus Knight again. Trying to bounce it outside, and again keeps his feet churning inside the 10. Yeah, I think he's starting to feel pretty good. I mean, he's starting to just find the little zone plays and being able to get eight yards on first down is tough. A lot of carries there. He's going to finally take a breather as you see him go to the sideline. Second down in short for the Golden Eagles. They're inside the 10. Here is Pagis straight ahead, brought down for a gain of one, maybe two third and short upcoming they gave us the first quarter stats i mean outside of the 90 yard touchdown reception from fields to how nothing really jumped out except the third down conversions golden eagles were 0 and 3 0 4 3 pardon me in that first quarter but this has been their best drive of the game here this has been their best drive and this is probably the biggest down of the game for them so far being able to be third and two if you can move the chains here to give you some success if you don't that's a win for south carolina state defense Third down and short. It's going to be a handoff to Begeese. And very close to the first down. Let's see where they spot it. Is it the right foot or the left foot spot? <laughs> <laughs> Look like it's going to be left foot spot because it's going to be fourth and one. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's going to take a whole lot of deliberation here on what te Tennessee Tech is going to do here because they went for it at midfield. So fourth down and one. Ball inside the 10. Golden Eagles looking for their first score of the game. Knocking on the door, going for it on fourth down. Puts a man in motion. And it's going to be Knight getting the football. Going to be stood up at the line. I'm not sure he got there. I don't think he got it. That's a turnover on downs from this angle. Didn't get it. Turnover on downs. And that is a big turnover. That's one of those times, though, uh, when defense need to stand up, you bend, but you don't break. 
So Marcus Knight and the Golden Eagles denied by the Bulldog defense. Aaron Smith first to get him on the MEAC Digital Network on ES. As you take a look at the old Bulldog, Buddy Pugh, a 1975 alum coming up on the 50th anniversary. The bachelor's and master's here at South Carolina State University, all MEAC honors as an offensive lineman and a math major. And I tell you, South Carolina State has an unbelievable alumni base, but now that class of 75 really supports their guy, and they really have supported Coach Pugh over the years. Out of the shotgun, three receivers. A turnover on downs by that Bulldog defense. And the Bulldogs with a run straight ahead. Not much going there for Jawarn Howe. And in that first quarter, Howe may have had the 90-yard reception, but in the first quarter, only four carries for five yards. Yeah, this defense line has been unbelievable. The front seven, I should say, as a whole, been unbelievable as far as being able to clog up holes that Jawarn looked like he'd be able to get. And next thing you know, he's on the ground. So second down and nine. Three wide outs. Bulldogs with a play action fake. Fields looking. Good protection here. Going to throw and it's incomplete. Hmm, Might have been a little miscommunication there between QB and receiver because there was nobody in that direction. Nigel Johnson is center of your screen there. But he was held up by one of the defenders. Third down and nine. You know, Fields is a quarterback that we have heard these coaches talk about. I've heard Buddy Pugh say it week in and week out. He's a guy that once he gets in rhythm, he's as good as any. But sometimes when he's just out of sync and out of whack, it, it, it takes a little while. Or it takes maybe that one play or two plays. Well, that sounds like most quarterbacks in America. Sure. You know, when you own, you own. And when you're off, you're off. Fields with a run here. Can't pick up the first down. He does get some running room for the punter out across the 10. As you take a look at Corey Fields. But now that, if, as your offense there, you want to get first down there to be able to flip the, the field there. So that's kind of a win for Tennessee Tech there to be able to get a three and out after being stopped on turnover mm -hmm. on downs there. So uh, get a good punt here by South Carolina State and be able to cover and make Tennessee Tech, I mean, Tennessee Tech have to drive the length of the field. As you take a look at Maxion Cobb, you know, after that, Touchdown by the Bulldogs. This has kind of become a field position game, you know, as you kind of alluded to. As Cobb boots this one all the way back to the 45 for Pagese. And great special teams tackling there. Oh, 
I mean, talk about a great one-on-one effort. That was Adonis Davis, the redshirt sophomore out of Blackville. Seven to nothing, Bulldogs. Back in Orangeburg, South Carolina, just under 10 minutes to play in the first half. Seven to nothing, South Carolina State still leads it over Tennessee Tech. Golden Eagles could not punch it in on their last possession, but they did force a, another stop by their sensational defense. And they've got the ball around midfield now. Pagese on the run, gets free at the 45, 40, still on his feet, fighting for extra yards inside the 30. What a run by Justin Pagese. I tell you what, we're getting a display of two outstanding backs from Tennessee Tech. As you can see, Pagese take the line and be patient. You know, a lot of times uh, running backs don't have patience. And you can see him be patient, stick his foot in the ground. You know, I like to use that term and uh, get upfield. I actually heard a play-by-play -play guy use that term last night in one of his touchdown calls. Stick his foot in the ground, and he scored last night. Two receivers left, two right. After a first down run for the Golden Eagles. And off to Marcus Knight, nowhere. A tackle on the backfield for this Bulldog defense. Yeah, you get to see uh, number 92, Brandon Tucker squeeze and get him on the ground there. Uh, great tackle by Brandon. So second down and 10. You know, the Golden Eagles have primarily kept it on the ground in their last couple of drives, but this offensive line pass protecting is one of their specialties. They only allowed 14 sacks a year ago in 2022. Their fewest in 24 years. I bring that up because from last year to this year, they bring back four linemen, four starters on that front. Here's a little pitch and catch near side. And that is Clark once again. He has been very active for this Golden Eagle offense. Clark had two catches in the first quarter. I think that's another two for him. Check that. That's Jalal Dean, who also had two catches in that first quarter. But well, we talked about not paying attention to records. I have really been impressed with Tennessee Tech on defense mm -hmm. and being able to uh, make some of the stops they've made, and I've been impressed with some of the uh, play here by Jordan Potts. So Potts, the QB. A true freshman inside the red zone. A high pitch to Marcus Knight down the near side. Ten, five still on his feet. Bowls over a player into the end zone. 
Are they going to say he stepped out or did he get in? There's no signal from the official. I think they're going to say he stepped out. Is that right? No, that's a touchdown. Okay. Didn't see a signal initially by the official. It looked from here that he got in and he did. And that's that same play that we watched on the fourth uh, down play on the fourth and short, the speed option. Uh, quarterback does a great job of pitching the ball, getting it out. Ooh, he was very close there. Yeah. I'm stepping out of bounds, but Marcus Knight gets the touchdown reception from Jordan Potts, and we're an extra point away from having a tie ball game. Snap, spot, kick, and that is, well, flag is down. But we'll send it a break as we take a look at Marcus Knight punching it in for the Golden Eagle score. Seven to seven, your score, we are tied up. Bulldogs and Golden Eagles after Marcus Knight on a flat pass, punches it into the end zone. And Parker will kick it away for Tennessee Tech. You know, this is the second trip to the Palmetto State for Tennessee Tech. They kicked off the season at Furman where they lost 45 to 10. I think they got a favorite couple of hot spots in the state of South Carolina, maybe a QT. <laughs> <laughs> don't know if they got those in Tennessee as they booted away for a touchback and the Bulldogs will get it back so coach Demetrius Davis what have you seen so far from the South Carolina State offense we've talked about outside of the Jawarn Howell 90 yard catch and score you know they did pick up a couple of first downs through the pass but on the ground it's been tough sledding it's been tough to run the football against this Tennessee Tech front seven uh, it's but like I tell you earlier, it's, it's a heavyweight bout. You just got to keep pounding, keep running the football, and then hopefully some of these little short runs will turn into long runs and play-action pass will come into play. Was that a keep pounding drop there? Keep pounding. I send that out to Bryce Young. Know, <laughs> <laughs> they, they could use the encouragement, the Carolina Panthers up there north of the border. As uh, Justin Smith Brown gets the pitching catch from Corey Fields. And that's a positive gain across the 30. And actually, going to say he stepped out of bounds just shy of the first down yard markers. We take a look at the cricket replay. Hmm. You know, he's got great feet. He does. He, he, I mean, outstanding awareness. Every time he catches the ball down on that sideline, always knows where he is. And is able to pick up just a couple of extra yards. 
Good positioning, Justin Smith-Brown, a sensational wide out as it's a second down and one. I think that's Josh Shaw getting it straight ahead. And after the initial hit, he tried to lunge forward at the 35. And the official is standing right at the first down yard marker, and they give it to him. Give it to him first down. That was a hard one-yard run. If you watch mm -hmm. the quick replay on a little inside zone play, uh, great play once again. I'm telling you, this front seven at Tennessee Tech has probably been the best we've seen so far. Absolutely, yeah. Josh Shaw at a hand of hand, the redshirt freshman. He's got 157 yards on the season coming in. A lot of those came last week against Virginia Lynchburg. Four receivers. And it's going to be a keeper for Fields. And oh, and he's hit hard and ripped back at the 35. That's Jackson Price, the DB at a Grand Rapids, Michigan. A transfer from Colgate. And you watch this play here, you see where it looks like it's a zone read, good pull, the next thing you know, it just, you know, a white jersey comes out of nowhere. And it seems like they're playing with 20 guys on the field right now. And Coach, you said something that stood out to me in the first quarter, closing speed by every single one of these defenders for Tennessee Tech. Ball hawks and closing speed on defense. Here they come on the blitz. And there is a catch by the big tight end. Close to a first down across the 45. That's our guy, Keyshawn Tony, the graduate. 6'4", 230, a big time target for Corey Fields. And he picks up the first down and keeps the sticks moving. And I'll be honest, with not being able to run the football, with fish, being efficient running the football right now, you need to be able to put the ball in Keyshawn Tony's hand a little bit more with some quick passes and things of that nature. Of course, Tony out of Williston, South Carolina. Transfer out of Chattanooga College, came back home to SC State. Throw over the middle and incomplete. Intended for Nigel Johnson. He caught that and then it was sliding down. Curious if we get a replay on that. He could not corral it. It was thrown a little behind him. Well, this is going to remind me of what I teach my kids. Like when you catch the football, you always ask your kid, what do you use to catch the football? And they say, your hands. Then I tell him, well, close your eyes. And when we close the eyes, I throw the football at him. I think what you're going to see here is Niger took his eyes off the football and was, a, was ready to tuck and go and make a big play and didn't secure the football. So second down and 10. Puts a man in motion. That's Johnson coming near side. Pump fake. Here they come. Rickard's chasing them. Throws this one, and it's too high for Johnson. But there is Daniel Rickard, 55, coming for Corey Fields. That's really the first time. We have called Rickard's name in terms of making a presence on the defensive side, but boy, he had fields. He had him in his sights. Yeah, between Rickard and, and Aaron Swafford, I, those two players to me have been the impact players on their defense today so far. Our cricket impact player was McGowan, who's more of the field general for this Tennessee Tech defense. Three receivers right, one in the near side. Put another man in motion. Here's Corey Fields back to pass. Fires this one downfield and it's incomplete. Fourth and 10. Bulldogs wanting a flag, not going to get it. I think that was great coverage there. Uh, ball might have been, might have, uh, official might have been saying that the ball was uncatchable, but I think it was a great defensive play and a uh, great coverage there by Tennessee Tech. Well, we wondered if we were going to call his name. On the coverage was Akachi Imanori out of Irmo, South Carolina. And the story on him, his uh, brother is playing for the University of South Carolina, the Gamecocks. Of course, uh, both playing for Irmo and Akachi. I believe the older brother had a couple of stops at Presbyterian and Wofford before coming here to Tennessee Tech. So Cobb kicks it, and it's fair caught at the 20. And we're still tied up. Golden Eagles and Bulldogs tied up at seven. Just under five to play in the half.
Back on the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN Plus, the Bulldog flag flying high and a tie ball game between Tennessee Tech and South Carolina State. And the Golden Eagles will have the football. Have it at their own 20. They're back in that wishbone shotgun type offense. This is Potts and gonna throw this one away incomplete. Stops the clock with 439, second down and 10. So it's been kind of a field position game for the better part of this first half, kind of a slugfest. Both these defenses have really kind of settled down. I'm actually enjoying this. I mean, a good <laughs> defensive football game and, and basically what it becomes to, or what it comes down to is who can capitalize when that time comes. When that opportunity comes to capitalize, who can? But at this point, you bend but don't break, but don't hurt yourself. Four down linemen for the Bulldogs. Four wideouts. A lot of different formations for Tennessee Tech offensively today. Potts going to throw this one kind of sidearm near side, and that is caught by the receiver, but not a whole lot there. That is Metrius Fleming. First time we've called that young man's name. He was the leader receiver a year ago. He's a graduate student. As we take a look at the cricket replay here. Yep, right. And we talk about closing, and you can see where Michael Bronson comes in and close just as fast as some of those Tennessee Tech players close on some of those uh, sticks and runs, you know. Get downfield, get them on the ground. Bronson has been a really much improved player for the Bulldogs the last couple of weeks, making some plays in the secondary. Third down, we'll call it six. Potts going to roll to his left. Going to throw, and that is caught by the receiver just past the 30, and that's good enough for a first down. That's Fleming again. Mm. I don't know if we can say enough about Jordan Potts in the pause uh, that he's had so far. I mean, being able to roll, and that basically he threw that ball across his body yeah. uh, for a completion and a big first down for Tennessee Tech. So Fleming with two catches on this drive. Moving the sticks. Ball at the 31. A little delayed play action fake, and he's going to be brought down in the backfield. Bulldogs weren't fooled by that one. Well, anytime you have a delayed zone or delayed RPO, the way you do it is you blow it up. You just throw one big hand grenade, blow everything up, and figure out where the pieces fall. Loss on the play, second and 11. As you take a look at the unheralded players in this game, that Tennessee Tech offensive line, you got to look at Delk, Weedman, Stevens, Hodnett, the center. Hodnett, a really good player at a Winder, Georgia. Potts going to roll to his left, looking, throws downfield. Oh, what a catch! And it's made across the 40. Flag comes in late, though. Another yeah. flag. With that flag coming in, one official running up with their hat off, might be illegal touching. Making the catch was Torin Baker out of Henderson, Hendersonville, Tennessee, pardon me, true sophomore. Good call there, Demetrius. Well, you know I've done this thing once or twice in my life. You know? <laughs> well, but, you also look for it as a coach, don't you? <laughs> I do. Anytime I see a flag, I can basically <laughs> tell you in the what proximity that flag comes in. But anytime a fisher comes and he have a flag and his hat's off, that means uh, it's illegal touching a lot of times. Man, what a grab by Baker. That's going to be negated. Taken off the board. Third and 11 now. For Tennessee Tech. <clears throat> Out of the shotgun. Two receivers in the near side. Bulldogs bring a little pressure here. Potts rolls to his right. Throws it in the flat. I think that's Baker again at the 40. And he's going to be close to the first down. That is Torin Baker again at a Hendersonville. And that's going to be a timeout call by the Golden Eagles. Looks like they're moving the sticks here, though. Going to give them the first down. First down. Yeah, Torn Baker with a... Really, it's been Baker and Fleming on this drive, both with two catches apiece. And here in the timeout. Yeah, and I, I hate to keep saying Jordan Potts, Jordan Potts, Jordan Potts, but if you look at the things he's been able to do of getting this ball out of his hand and being able to continue to drive is big. Once again, we're talking about a freshman, mm -hmm. a true freshman that's coming in making his first start on, on the road. On the road, On yes. the road, that makes a big difference. 
you know, and one thing we have noticed here, the success that Potts has had in the passing game, it's been in the flats. It's been in the flats. He's been able to get the ball out of his hand, make quick reads, and been able to get the field. And it haven't been big plays, but it's been able to continue drives, which mm -hmm. right now is big. Well, she just heard Coach Demetrius Davis. I'm Tyler Cup. 206 remaining here in the half in a really pivotal drive. I've heard you say this before. The last three minutes of a first half and the first three minutes of a second half, the most important, whether it be football or basketball. I've heard basketball coaches say exactly. that. Exactly. Exactly. I think, and it deals with having momentum going in the half, which brings momentum out of the half. So uh, those last three minutes, if you can get big plays, it actually – correlates and, and spills over to the second half. Mm -hmm. Three receivers. New set of downs for the Golden Eagles. Tennessee Tech going to fire this one over the middle. It's incomplete. A little miscommunication there. Receivers were not even in the vicinity. They were streaking down the field. And Potts was looking over the middle. So clock is stopped with 2.02. Another interesting thing to point out here about this drive you got a freshman quarterback on the road doesn't want to make a mistake here and put the Bulldogs in business a mistake here would be huge it's actually magnified like I say within the last three minutes so you have to be uh, conscientious of that and don't try to be too aggressive and put him in a bad position so Potts back to pass and just lofts this one out of bounds incomplete some of the Bulldogs were saying possibly intentional grounding, but mm, the officials are going to talk about this. I don't know if that's exactly what they're discussing. It could be, and it is. Yeah, I think that's exactly what they just threw that late flag on. Let's get the official word from the White Hat. Yep, there it is, intentional grounding. You know, I was looking at that. He kept backing up with the pressure through that near side. I mean, all the receivers were on the far side. Let's right. take a look at the cricket replay. Well, that's actually a screen play he was trying to set up there. Mm -hmm. And what you teach your young quarterback is to throw that screen, if it's covered, to the feet of the running back instead mm -hmm. of throwing it out because that is intentional grounding, which intentional grounding is, I think, the second worst penalty in football after holding because not only do you use the, lose the yards, you lose the down. Mm -hmm. You know, with that holding penalty, you, you lose the yards, but you keep second or third down or whatever. Third down and 20 plus. The first down yard marker is on the other side of the 50. Potts going to roll to his left, looking deep downfield. Throws it deep, and that is incomplete. Pass is incomplete. Boy, there was a crowd of Bulldogs and Golden Eagles on that far side. And I think that's Aiden Weber there getting some dap from his teammates. And that'll force the Golden Eagles to punt this one away. Kind of looked like a Hail Mary play. Just hey, toss it up there, knock it down. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was too close for the defensive back coaches. I guarantee because they was able to get some hands on the ball. One of the best punters really in the country right now. Boots this one away, and he's going to be brought down right around the 25. We heard some of the South Carolina State coaches saying it's the best punter they have seen in years. Hunter Bigelow out of Florida. The junior is averaging 40 yards per punt. And that's like having a 12th man on defense. You know, your punter is always your defensive favorite person because if you can flip the field or if you can make the offense have to travel farther to score, then that's a defensive friend. Buddy Pugh. Had a look at him giving some late game coaching to Jalen Evans. Gave Evans an earful. Could have been positive. Never know. Yeah, it could have been positive. <laughs> First and ten. Bulldogs back with the football. Let's see what they do with it with under two to play. And there's a little pitch and catch there to Justin Smith-Brown. It is a positive gain across the 30. You know, I've noticed, Demetrius, they're really trying to get six more involved. It is our cricket impact player, but, you know, it's been the deep ball. Now it's kind of been little button hooks and screens, just trying to get the ball in Justin's hands. Well, I mean, you gave us an interesting stat to start this game that their pass defense is pretty doggone good. Mm -hmm. And we talked about it earlier that it was going to be tough uh, for South Carolina State passing game against their back seven or their back four guys. 
So we've got a second down and short. I didn't see a flag, but the official is waiting for a call here from the booth. Didn't see a penalty. Might be challenging the spot or something. Play clock, game clock will start on my line. Okay, so they're resetting the play clock and game clock. So second down and short. You mentioned the pass defense for Tennessee Tech. They are number one in the Big South OVC Conference. Corey Field's going to throw this one, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Justin Smith-Brown, overshot him, third and short. Penalty looked like it came in late. A lot of times that might be a roughing penalty, which at this point South Carolina State needs something to kind of get some kind of momentum going. Yep. Personal foul on Tennessee Tech, so tack on some yards for the Bulldogs on this drive and an automatic first and 10. And this is one of those plays you talked about, momentum swinging. There's a minute left, and now the Bulldogs are going to be set up just behind the 50. Yeah, that was rough in the pass, which is a tough uh, defensive call because you a lot much rather tell your guys, whoa, didn't have you tell your guys sick them. If you got to tell your guys sick them, now you're in trouble. But you much, you much rather say, hold, man, hold, hold up. So Fields, play action fake, good protection. Throws this deep, and that is incomplete. Pass is incomplete. I think he was looking for Jordan Smith there. Yep. Take a look at the cricket replay. This Tennessee Tech defense has only sacked the QB 10 times this season through five games. And for the most part, this SC State offensive line has kept Fields jersey clean. They have, and you can see uh, those guys do a great job picking a twist up on the last play and protecting court. So back to pass being chased, and well, there it is. There's a sack for the Golden Eagle defense. <laughs> they heard me. Talking about it, and there's Hudson Tucker, his sixth tackle for loss. That is called a curse of the play-by-play -play guy. You mentioned something, and on the next step, it happens. But uh, great uh, pursuit there. And the sack, first sack of the night uh, mm. for Tennessee Tech. So now it's a third down. Call it about 17 or so as the clock ticks at 35 seconds. This will be interesting to see what Coach Buddy Pugh does. Going to maybe hold this, maybe take a shot, see what he can get. Interesting play call coming up. Hand off to Hal. Big hole at the 45. And he is brought down just shy of midfield. And I think somebody called a timeout. Probably the Golden Eagles. So a timeout by Tennessee Tech, trying to preserve some time with eight seconds left. Just a little draw play there to Howell. Conservative for Coach Buddy Pugh. And with the way their defenses are playing, you can't argue it. Well, you don't want to give up a big play there with less than 10 seconds left to go in the half. Mm -hmm. And you can see Tennessee Tech will call a timeout there because that forces South Carolina State to punt. Uh, if, if South Carolina State punt, they're probably going to bring some pressure and try to see if they can get a block, get a scoop and score right there before half. So eight seconds left as you take a look at Coach Dwayne Alexander. 58 and 73 overall as a coach. Had a couple of other stops before he came here back home to Tennessee Tech and 1989 graduate in his sixth season. Of course, this being the first meeting between these two, meet, two teams, we understand it's part of a home and home where South Carolina State will travel to Cookville next year. So Maxion Cobb will punt this one away with nine seconds left. Golden Eagles try to preserve some time. And look, there is nobody back to return. They're bringing the house. And Cobb gets to boom this one. Takes a bulldog bounce behind the 20. And the clock shows zero. Is that it? Yep, they're going to head to the half. We got a tie ball game, a slugfest between these two clubs. The Bulldogs and the Golden Eagles hold on. Looks like they're coming back here. 
Well, we'll send it to break on the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN+. Plus. is the main reason why we are the number one band in the great Palmetto State. 7-7, seven seven, your score in Orangeburg, South Carolina, Tennessee Tech, and South Carolina State. And it has been a defensive slugfest. I got to find more adjectives. I got to go look at the thesaurus to find out more words for what we're seeing here today between these two defenses. We'll talk more about it here during the break as it's 7-7, seven seven, South Carolina State and Tennessee Tech on the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN+.
Back in Orangeburg, South Carolina, South Carolina State and Tennessee Tech locked at seven here during the halftime break. And we'll have a couple of special guests wishing adieu to Coach Buddy Pugh and his longtime success here with 15 winning seasons. Three MEAC Coach of the Year honors, of course, those two National Coach of the Year honors and two HBC national titles. The Celebration Bowl winner just a couple of years ago, Coach. Coach Prime, you know, Coach, <laughs> uh, which Coach Prime took a, a little lick last night, but, yeah. uh, or this morning, I should say. But, uh, <laughs> you know, Coach Pugh's done an unbelievable job, man. He's just done so much for South Carolina State University and done so much for the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, man. It's, he's going to be a tough act to follow. Well, we're going to hear from some of the coaches who know him best and former players. Well, first, uh, we'll hear from Joe Taylor. Virginia Union Athletic Director who had some battles with Buddy when he coached at Hampton University and was also the AD there. And Dr. Thomas Stallworth, the Atlanta strength conditioning coach, who, of course, has some South Carolina connections as well. You'll hear from both of them right now. Hard work does not go unnoticed. Congratulations, Buddy. You have truly had a career that is outstanding. You have mentored over thousands of young men, and because of you, they have become better people, better men. I myself became a better coach, because whenever I was going against you, I knew your team was going to be prepared. I knew your team was going to be physical. So again, I'm better because of you. Now, know this, your enshrinement <laughs> is waiting. Your illustrious career has garnered you Hall of Fame status. Congratulations. Enjoy the next chapter in your career. And South Carolina State and this profession will never be the same. Congratulations, buddy. Love you, buddy. Coach Pugh, just wanted reach out and say thank you for allowing me to get started with my career with you after graduating from University of Tennessee. I'm extremely humbled to have been a coach for you and congratulations on 20 years of service. And thank you for helping me with my beautiful family, my wife and two kids. And I just can't say thank you enough for your opportunity to be a part of the Bulldog family.
Seven to seven, your score, Tennessee Tech in South Carolina State. As we take a look at the cricket replay highlights. And it starts with that 99, excuse me, 90 yard touchdown reception from Fields to Howell. And that's one of the biggest plays for South Carolina State all night. Uh, Tennessee Tech's done a great job of, of playing defense after this play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bulldogs haven't done a whole lot since then. They've moved the ball a couple of times on some drives as we take a look at the touchdown for Marcus Knight. And that was more of a pitch. I think I called that a pass on the initial call. That was a pitch tonight for the touchdown there. And those were our two low scores in this game. As we take a look at the first half stats, what jumps out? Well, I think uh, passing yards for South Carolina State is a little more than uh, – like that's been on about two or three plays, uh, but rushing yards. Um, they, uh, Tennessee Tech have done a better job of running the football, which is being able to stay on the field and be persistent in your approach on your offensive deal. You have to be able to run the football. And if South Carolina State going to make this a game in the second half, got to be able to run the football. Two of seven on third down for SC State. One of six on third down. Time possession slightly on the side of the Golden Eagles. We're in for a good second half. Sit tight. 7-7 seven to seven your score. Golden Eagles and the Bulldogs coming up on the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN+.
Come to South Carolina State University. Here you'll find unlimited possibilities for wherever you want your college career to take you. Since 1896, we've trained generations of scholars and leaders, building a legacy of excellence. Explore our stellar academic programs, including nuclear engineering, military science, biology, education, computer science, agribusiness, and more. Enjoy student-focused activities and organizations and discover your passion. Dare to be great. Enroll now and join our legacy of excellence at South Carolina State University. There is something greater than finishing first. True champions stand on principles. We fight for the right causes. We believe in the power of team, whether in rebound, receiving, or in research. In service and in sportsmanship. Only a few have what it really takes. We develop the talent. We unleash the potential. It all boils down to this. Now is the time. This is the place. We are MEAC. Digital Network and ESPN Plus locked at seven. Back where we started, partner, dot up between South Carolina State and Tennessee Tech. What's going to be the difference here in the second half? Somebody's got to get something going on offense. Somebody's got to make a big play on offense and defensively just continue to do what you're doing. Uh, but I think this game is going to come down to who's going to make a mistake first. Mm. And that team that makes the mistake first is going to give up momentum. And I can see this game shifting a lot in the second half. Yeah, that's my thing. You know, with the defenses playing so well, it's almost as if the offenses have to be very careful because it's as if that one turnover could truly change the game. You know, one touchdown in this second half may be all you need to win the game. Well, it's sort of like a golf tournament. You know, one swing will not win you a golf tournament, but one swing can lose your golf tournament. <laughs> you know, and... And, and playing for four days, you know, that's a lot of pressure on guys. You've had that in the holster a while. You, you, you're a big <laughs> golf guy. You've had that in the holster. Well done. All right, so the sun comes out. It was overcast for most of the day, and sun shining on Willie Jeffries' field as Maxion Cobb will kick it away. So Tennessee Tech will get the ball to start things off here in this third quarter. Tyler Cup, Coach Demetrius Davis on the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN+. 7-7 Plus. Seven to seven your score, and we will see more than likely the freshman Jordan Potts come back out. You know, Coach Dwayne Alexander said we will probably see both QBs, but Potts is playing so well, why pull them? Well, this is my first time seeing Tennessee Tech play, and right now I think Potts give them – uh, the best chance to win. Yeah, uh, I haven't seen him. I don't have anybody else to compare him to, but he's done an unbelievable job of just maintaining this game as a freshman once again on the road. Well, and talking to some of the media uh, here in the press box, they said this Tennessee Tech team, the big thing that's held them back is the quarterback play. They've got talent on the offensive line and skill guys, running backs. Jordan Potts may be the answer at freshman. And he lofts this one, and that is caught at the 40 for a first down catch and run for the Tennessee Tech Golden Eagles. That is Metrius Fleming. Once again, great job on the play action. Great call on the first and 10 play action coming out of the half. Uh, Jordan does a good job of keeping it alive with his feet and throwing up and giving his receiver an opportunity to make a play. So... Potts will come back out. A first down pass completion brings it up to the 44. Potts got to hand it off straight ahead. And that is Pegues with a run inside Bulldog territory. You can see Jalen Evans coming in and making the tackle there uh, <laughs> late in, this, in on for a 10-yard gain there, or 8-yard gain, I should say, uh, which is not what you want if you're a South Carolina State Bulldog now. 11 first downs for that Golden Eagle offense in the first half. They've already picked up one here and looking for a second one as they've got the ball just inside Bulldog territory. Second down and short. Double tight end set. 
Hunter Barnhart, good-looking tight end. He's been doing a lot of blocking for this Tennessee Tech offense. Back to pass is Potts over the middle, and that is Fleming again for the first down catch. Tennessee Tech is showing a lot of uh, poise or a lot of uh, support in their freshman quarterback on his road of being able to put this ball in the air a lot with a freshman. I'm impressed with that. I think the balance on offense, too, is starting to really put South Carolina State on their heels. I mean, it was a heavy rushing attack, mixed in some passing that first half. But look at this, coming out aggressive. Pass, pass, pass to pick up a couple of first downs. Out of the shotgun, three receivers. Puts a man in motion. That's Bradley Clark. And going to throw this one. It's a slant. That's Fleming again with the reception at the 25. Another first down for the Golden Eagles. Wow. Another great play I'll call here. I mean, off of the RPO. You know, people say RPO a lot, and a lot of people don't understand what RPO stands for, but it's a run-pass option. You know, you quarterbacks can run it, they can pull it, or they can throw it. You know, that's a lot of responsibility that you put on your quarterback. So a couple of big first downs, and Tennessee Tech is already – Inside the Bulldog 30. Two receivers, three backs. And here's the handoff near side. That is Pegues coming far side as he cuts it up inside the 20. And this balance makes this offense even more dangerous on this drive because you've got two very capable running backs in Pegues and Knight. And you've got a freshman quarterback that's making great reads and getting the ball out of his hands also, so... This is going to be tough. This is by far the best drive of the game for Tennessee Tech. Very efficient. They've yet to face a third down. It's second down and short here. But another man in motion. Double tights again, two receivers. Second and three. Play action fake. Potts going to roll to his right. Now he's going to tuck it and run, and he's forced out of bounds, shy of the first down yard marker. And on the chase was Jared Kirksey. So third down and short. The Bulldogs can kind of redeem themselves <laughs> defensively if they can get a stop here. It's big down here. If you can get off the field here or if you can hold this momentum here, I mean, that's a win for the defense. Four receivers. Bulldog was showing pressure. Look to the sideline, might have just changed the play. Claps his hands, Potts, throws in the flat, that is Knight, got it, first down and more, 10-5, into the end zone, no signal from the official, oh my, looks like he's just going to get out, but that is a first down catch and run for Marcus Knight as he stepped out around the five-yard line. Another good play action pass, good catch, getting the ball out to the flats. Give Knight a chance to get to the end zone. Yep, came up a little short there at the pylon. That was a good call by the official. They held off on that, saw he stepped out. So a first and goal for Tennessee Tech. Ball appears to be at the six. Two receivers to the near side. It's a man in motion. That's Clark again. Handoff tonight, hole, and he's going to be brought Marcus. down. Well, still on his feet. How did he stay up into the end zone? Touchdown, Tennessee Tech. Oh, it looked like they gave up on the play, but the only one who was still moving was Knight. When Knight could hear his coaches in his head Knight saying, to play to the whistle. You know, don't stop until you hear the whistle blow. Boy, I've got to see that on the cricket replay as it's a touchdown for Tennessee Tech. An awkward-looking score, but Marcus Knight punches it in for his second touchdown of the day. Score is confirmed by the replay booth. We just heard that next to us. As coming on for the extra point is Hayden Olsen out of Buford, Georgia. And Tennessee Tech takes their first lead of the game. 14, check that, 13-7, to pending this extra point. It's good. And that's good. So 9.50 remaining in the third as we take a look at the touchdown run. Knight fights for it. Looks like he was down. Kept on churning for the end zone. 14 to 7.
Dubbing back to receive the kickoff. 83. Monty Burgess. Tennessee Tech, the underdogs leading the Bulldogs. The Golden Eagles at one and four on the road with a freshman quarterback just put on an offensive clinic, a methodical drive downfield, and it was the transfer out of Montana, Marcus Knight, punching it in. Yeah, if you look at their stats and the teams that they've played so far, you could see that they was only a position or a player two from being a pretty good football team. I think we're seeing their quarterback and. I think they're on the sideline saying, now nah, we might have our guy. So the emergence of Jordan Potts for this Tennessee Tech <laughs> offense. Let's see if this Bulldog offense can do anything here to answer that long drive. And the capper was the Marcus Knight touchdown run, which looked very awkward on the cricket replay. We saw the replay going to break. It looked like at least the defense thought he was down and he wasn't, clearly. The officials were right in there checking it out and kept his feet churning and lunged forward for the goal line in the end zone. Well, that's why you tell your guys always play to the whistle. Play until you got a guy actually on the ground. And you really don't know when he's on the ground until you hit a whistle. So South Carolina State, not good there on defense. So handoff near side, Jawarn Howe. And that has been the day on the ground. A lot of that, <laughs> a lot of nothing, a lot of no gains for South Carolina State. They're averaging one yard on the ground, one yard per play. Hal in that first half, Coach, six carries, 13 yards. Shaw had one carry for a yard, although that one yard was a first down. Corey Fields had four carries for three yards. Not much doing there. Fields back to throw. Going to fire this one near side. That is how when he slips on the turf. And all of a sudden, this defense has forced a third and long. That's going to be a loss on the play. Third and 11 upcoming. Yeah, if you're South Carolina State here, now nah, it's not the time to panic. You know, you don't have to hit the panic button here. I mean, it still is a, a game where you want to end all drives with a kick. Don't do anything to turn the ball over here. Let your defense get a, give you a chance to help you here. So a third down and 11 for the Bulldog offense, trying to answer that Tennessee Tech score with 8.44 remaining in the third. Sun shining now here in Orangeburg. Beautiful day for football across the Palmetto State. Fields back to throw, and now he's going to tuck it and run in between the defenders at the 30, well shy of the first down, and the Golden Eagles get the stop and continue to carry this momentum. Take a look at the cricket replay here. Fields just had nowhere to go. Yeah, great coverage downfield. You know, we talked about that pass defense, and that pass defense have upheld their end of the bargain. Uh, defensive line has done a great job. Nobody's open. Corey was forced to tuck. Tennessee Tech gets a, to get a punt out of this deal, so they win in that drive. I tell you, I have noticed a player that you immediately pointed out in the first quarter, Aaron Swafford, the leading tackler for the Golden Eagles. He is a jolt of energy on every play for this defense. Cobb is going to boot it at the 30. It is returnable, but a short return up to the 37, 38 yard line for Pagis. We will send it to break. The Golden Eagles lead it, and they've got the football 14 to 7. The MEAC Digital Network on ESPN.
Time for today's trivia. We're calling it Buddy Trivia this season as you take a look at Coach Buddy Pugh. He's coaching today. He's got that headset on. But today's Buddy Trivia, what three high schools in South Carolina did Buddy Pugh coach at? Of course, before he went into the college game, what three high schools did Buddy Pugh coach at? He was the head coach at two and an assistant at another. Answer coming up. Here's the handoff straight ahead to Marcus Knight on the second offensive possession of the game in this third quarter, I should say. Second offensive possession in the quarter for Tennessee Tech. Their first one went right down the field for a touchdown to take the lead 14 to seven. Yeah, this is gonna be the test for the defense here. You know, now it's gonna be the time when you actually gotta boil your back here and get a stop and uh, get these guys off the field because they're starting to get momentum and the more momentum, more first down, the more confidence. Three receivers right, one on the near side. Out of the shotgun, Marcus Knight is back there. Knight's gonna get it, trying to get the edge, cuts it inside before he's brought down. I think that's Zan Dunham on the stop. Out across the 40. You know, we saw Coach Pugh with the headset down on one knee. That is as involved as we have seen him in the last two weeks. I, I think he feels it is gut check time and time for him to really step in and figure out what he can implement, what he can uh, make adjustment-wise to kind of turn the tide here for South Carolina State. Well, Coach Pugh's not going to the house because he's tired. I mean, he's going to the house just to enjoy life a little bit. He still <laughs> have a lot of football, a lot of coaching Absolutely. in it. Absolutely. Know, so yeah. Coach is still an unbelievable coach. So here comes the pressure. Potts nowhere to go, and he's sacked. And that's just what the doctor ordered for the Bulldogs. Weber in on the stop there. There's Aaron Smith as well. Oh, and that's not good. Smith is in pain. Helmet came off on that sack. Let's try to see. Looks like he just kind of got crunched in between the linemen there under the dog pile on the sack. Well, let's hope that's the case. He got the air knocked out of him or something of that nature because now this would be a blow. We talked about gut shake, but now this is by far your best defensive player. So let's say it looked like Aaron got the air knocked out of him a little bit. Getting up on his own power, heading to the sideline. You know, and that comment I made about Coach Buddy Pugh, we have just noticed the last two weeks, you know, a lot of these games have been in hand with the Citadel and Virginia Lynchburg, and he's kind of let the coordinators do their thing. Make no mistake about it, when you hear Buddy Pugh in the press conferences, game week prepare, we talk to these assistant coaches. He is the one putting that plan together, pal. And it's gonna end up in a punt for South Carolina State, and they will fair catch it at the 35. So the Bulldogs get the stop and they get the ball back, just what they needed. They trail 14 to seven on the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN+.
back on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN Plus. Today's Buddy Trivia with three high schools in South Carolina. Did Buddy Pugh coach at Orangeburg Wilkinson, where he was an assistant. He was a head coach at Keenan, and of course, Fairfield Central, where he won a state championship before moving on to the University of South Carolina, where he was hired by Coach Brad Scott and Lou Holtz under him for a couple seasons. And then, of course, ended up here at his alma mater at South Carolina State. We were just talking during the break. Of course, I want to get into the high school days and what you know and heard stories about that. But I want to know, being in the same room with Buddy Pugh and Lou Holtz, well, what was that like? Wasn't a whole lot. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Coach didn't talk much. You know, Lou Holtz kind of <laughs> ran those meetings back in the day. But, you know, we talked about Fairfield Central where Coach was privileged to coach one of the best quarterbacks ever <laughs> in the history uh, of playing football, which is a guy named David Corley Jr. Mm. I know you thought I was going to say me, I thought I you were going to say you. Yeah. yeah. I, I, thought, I thought you were going myself, nah, Demetrius Davis. I wasn't very good. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a catch made by Nigel Johnson setting up a third down and six. This is a big third down here for the Bulldog offense. Trying to change momentum. The defense got the stop, forced the three and out and punt. Corey Fields in this offense now trying to get something going. Back to pass is Fields. Going to swing it out. That is Howell, and he's going to be just shy of the first down. Very close to picking it up about a yard shy. <laughs> That offense is staying on the field. Oh, but he's thinking about it. Now he sends out the punt unit. Yep. Like I said, it's still a one-score game here. Bend but don't break. You know, a first down here would be great if you get it. Yeah. But it would be a disaster if you don't. It seemed like Buddy was thinking about it, kind of hesitated there before he sent out the team, the punt team, rather, the unit, as Cobb is out to kick it. This is in that weird area where you may or may not see a fake. I think you have to see a timeout here. Yeah, a little miscommunication on the special teams unit for South Carolina State. Did they take the penalty or was that a timeout? Delay a game. Okay. Yeah, you take the delay there. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a difficult time on the headsets. If you've never been in the headsets in that time because coaches is talking to the offensive coordinator, should we go special team coordinator trying to get the special teams together. So it's – it's a lot going on in the headsets when you have uh, a fourth and one or a fourth and two uh, for a play in a game like this. So they take the delay of game, and they will kick it away. Oh, Cobb dropped it. Man, what a great job of getting that ball out. Pagese on the return, and this Bulldog special team unit has been sensational this season as they bring them down for a very short return on the play. Well, if you're South Carolina State here, Tyler, I think you got to lean on your defense here. you got to lean on your defense, hoping that, hoping that your defense can make a play that will give you an opportunity to get some momentum because the momentum is still kind of out right now. Uh, you look at the punt here, uh, great job of actually just getting the snap to mm -hmm. be able to get it off. Now, that could have been a disaster. Whew. Man. So... Tennessee Tech gets the football back. Golden Eagles are 1-4 coming into this game. South Carolina State 2-3. Buddy trying to get back to 500 before MEAC play begins. Tennessee Tech may have found their QB. Golden Eagles going to fire this one. Wide open receiver coming across the middle of the field, and he gets it to the 50-yard line. A big catch for Bradley Clark. Take a look at the cricket replay. Yeah, great job on the RPO. We talked about the RPOs a little earlier. Uh, great job by John Potts keeping the ball in there long enough to, for the receiver to clear. First down. Jalen Evans on the tackle. First and 10. Just behind the 50 at the 49. Three receivers. Knight's going to get it. And just kind of lunge across midfield. Jordan Potts, the freshman QB at a Powell, Tennessee, has done a phenomenal job here on the road, getting the start 
And you said it. You've actually said it multiple times, and there's really no other way to put it. You can't emphasize it anymore. The poise he has shown today. Unbelievable. Yeah, I think the P and pot stand for poise. <laughs> you know, he's been a, a very poised quarterback for a freshman, and we keep you know saying that, and that's big when you're on the road starting for your first start. That's why they pay you the big bucks, that line right there. This is Pagui straight ahead and a nice <laughs> run for the sophomore out of Birmingham inside the 35-yard line. Boy, run, pass. Tennessee Tech is really comfortable offensively right now. Sideline warning on the Bulldogs as the officials call it out. Take a look at the cricket replay. Just found the little crease and scored it through. Mm. Yeah, I think the momentum now, right now, shifted towards the Tennessee Tech side. But South Carolina State defense still can bend, but don't break here. Still a lot of football left to be played. Just got to keep playing. Yeah, let's not forget Tennessee Tech had it inside the 20, and it was a turnover on downs where they tried to punch it in on fourth and short and the Bulldog defense denied them 253 left in this third quarter of play but the Golden Eagles are back on the move leading by a touchdown SC State kind of loading the box here crunched up tight hard snap count oh puts the football on the ground they fight for it Bulldogs say they have it, and they do. Oh, they needed that one bad. And that's Patrick Godbolt on the recovery. When dealing with a freshman, it takes making plays like that, making the freshman make a mistake. They were getting too comfortable. And as a defensive coordinator, you never want an offensive or a quarterback to be comfortable. You want to be uncomfortable, so great job. You can see South Carolina stay on the speed option uh, all day to be able to <laughs> strip that ball there, and that is a big turnover, Tyler. Oh, that was Godbolt on the strip and the recovery as we take a look at the cricket replay. My goodness, what a play. Out of Blythewood, South Carolina. Did you just have uh, some nasty flashbacks? I did. I you... think he might have had that same play against us a couple years ago. Yeah, I remember texting you that night. That was a tough play. And a lofted pass to Jordan Smith as a first down at midfield. And that might be the spark to light the fire for this Bulldog offense. Well, we talked about it. And defensively, a lot of times that happens. But South Carolina State offensively, a little bit at a time. You, you bend but don't break. You know, and that's a that's a, a philosophy that you got to have if you see Jordan Smith making a big play there. Jordan Smith, of course, out of Columbia. Right down 26 at a Ridgeview High School where for years it was a wide receiver factory. Receivers punched up tight, play action fake. Corey going to throw this downfield and that is incomplete, had his man. Oh, just overshot him and it is hard to overthrow Justin Smith-Brown, but he did there. Mm, Justin Smith-Brown showing some pain here. Hopefully this is just a cramp, but that's one of your speed receivers, one of your big-time playmakers. Oh, just overshot him. Yeah, you can see him on the post ball. He, he got behind him. You know, like they say, football is a game of inches. Justin Smith-Brown, who has been so integral to the passing success of Corey Fields, Jr. Coming into the game, <laughs> he had three touchdowns off five catches. 168 yards, those touchdowns were huge plays. I mean, 30, 40 plus yard touchdowns. I think we were hoping uh, a little more of a cramp, but it might look a little more, uh, but let's hope that he's okay. Let's remember too, that he did have an injury. I believe it was either in week one or week two. And when we saw him against the Citadel, that was his first game back, getting the start. And, had a touchdown in that game. Right. So he's going to head to the sideline, frustrated. And it'll be second down and 10 for the Bulldog offense. So that's a big miss. Let's see who steps up in his place. You got Richard Bailey coming back out. I don't see him there, but we know Hezekiah Massey is capable of making some big catches. Corey Fields. Out of the shotgun snap. Looking left, looking right. Now he finds Nigel Johnson on the little tunnel screen inside the 
check that 45 yard line. Clock ticking, 140 remaining in this third quarter. Bulldogs, of course, looking for a touchdown. But you feel like this is a huge drive in this game. You just don't know how many opportunities you're going to get against this defense. You really don't. And you're on your side of the field, and to stay on the field right here now is huge. Being down one score, you definitely need to stay on the field. They put Jordan Smith in motion in the slot. Field's going to roll to his right, lofts this one incomplete. And he had Aaron Swafford chasing him down. Fields got hit hard after that throw. And it brings up fourth down. Hmm. So the fourth and five, Coach Pugh decides to punt it here. And look at Swafford bringing him down to the turf. He's been over, all over the field all night tonight. And thinking about this punt here, I think you have to here. I mean, you, your defense has been your strength, your strength here. I think you try to pin them, yeah. uh, try to flip the field here, and hopefully your defense can get on the field and get them three and out, and then now you still have the same field position. Well, as you said, don't panic. A lot of football left, and your defense is playing really well. Flag is down here. Fair caught at the 10. And let's give credit where it's due. The special teams unit has been sensational with uh, Max Sion Cobb has had some great punts playing the field position game, pinning Tennessee Tech inside their own 20 multiple times. During the kick, receiving team, number 15. Holding on the receiving team, so a great for the Bulldogs. The First down, Tennessee Tech. That should put them at the five, right? That should put them at the five. And, uh, give your defense, you give your defense a chance to come out. If you're on the sideline, what you're saying, all right, guys, let's get a three and out. Let's get off the field here. Let's get off the field. Of course, the Bulldogs would love to force another turnover and get their offense even closer to pay dirt. Tough position for this freshman QB, but he has answered the bell here today on the road so far. Jordan Potts standing at his own goal line. Puts Clark in motion in the slot. Hand off to the back, nothing. Met at the line of scrimmage. And that's our guy. Aaron, Aaron Smith. Smith, yeah, good to see him back after he was in a lot of pain earlier today. And he's back on the field making plays. He really is the field general for this defense. He really is the field general for this team. I think mm. he's the heartbeat for this team on offense and defense. And any time that you're a defensive player, and you the heartbeat of an offense, now that, that says a lot. That's well put. So second and 10, but they're at their own five yard line. Smith showing pressure. Gonna hand off, trying to get free here, cuts it upfield, and he might have got back to the original line of scrimmage. That was Knight on the carry. Oh, he was tiptoeing on that goal line, wasn't he? <laughs> But I tell you what, Tyler, very seldom in the game do you say that this might be the biggest play of the game. But, I mean, with this, you know, in with the, going into the quarter here, now this next third down is going to be big. Smith on the stop again along with Weber. 14-7, to Tennessee Tech leads South Carolina State. Fourth quarter coming up on the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN+. Plus.
We take a look at Marcus Knight in his day. A couple of touchdowns, 69 yards rushing on the day. Two touchdowns off 13 carries, averaging five yards every time he carries it. Good day for him. Great day for him. He's been the backbone basically to this offense of getting some momentum and getting some things going. He's also got two catches for 25 yards. Marcus Knight, the transfer out of Montana, is an absolute weapon for this Golden Eagle offense. And boy, they need him right now. Third and 10 at their own five yard line as we start this fourth quarter. Tennessee Tech leads South Carolina State 14 to seven, but the Golden Eagles are pinned back. Put Barnhart in motion, delayed handoff. This is to Knight. And he's going to be well shy, gang tackled behind the 10. As a number of Bulldogs back there, including Aaron Smith. They send out the punt team. I tell you what, he's a tough runner. I, I thought they might have to get a couple guys from off the sideline to come help <laughs> to get him down. I mean, he is relentless when he runs the football. Listen, if you got a team of 22s, Marcus Knight and uh, who's our guy on defense, Aaron Swafford, those two guys have really played well today for Tennessee Tech. That's a team that is going to give the Big South OVC Conference fits for the back half of the season. That's a high punt. And that is fair caught at midfield. We'll send it a break. 14 to 7. Tennessee Tech leads the Bulldogs, but SC State is getting it back to start this fourth quarter. Early fourth quarter here. We take a look at some other scores around the MEAC on the MEAC Digital Network. Harvard over Howard right now, 48 to 7. Looking to close that one out. Norfolk State will play Tennessee State here in just a little bit later on this evening. Of course, South Carolina State will begin MEAC play next week on the road at Delaware State. You know, you look at those two schools, uh, Tyler Howard and Harvard. When I was in high school, you know, I was trying to figure out where I wanted to go to school, and I applied to both of them. You know, mm. Harvard and Howard both told me I was overqualified. They said I'm too smart <laughs> and said that my test scores were too high and it's, I can't be an Ivy League student or I can't be a Howard student. It's the audacity for me, <laughs> the audacity and the dry humor that was so well done. <laughs> Second down and ten. Two receivers left, two right. Bulldogs with a big drive here around midfield. Fields back to pass being pressured. Going to throw this one out. Got a man. 
and he gets it into Tennessee Tech territory. And I believe that is Massey on the catch. Yes, it is. Hezekiah out of Clover, South Carolina, the redshirt junior. So third down and short. Hezekiah, one of the receivers, stepping up in the place of the injured Justin Smith-Brown, who is still on the sideline. Shaw in the backfield with Fields. Shaw will take it and nothing. Oh, my goodness. This defensive line has just collapsed the Bulldog O-line when it comes to running the football. They have had no chance today. Yeah, and I think at this time, fourth and five is now go for it time. Mm, you know, so yeah. South Carolina State is going to have to go for it here, and it's going to come down to being able to make a play to stay on the field. And I think Buddy may have been thinking on a third and short, two plays to pick up the first down. That's why he ran it. Going to go for it here on fourth and two. Fields back to throw. And no, incomplete. Looking for Jordan Smith near side. No flags, and it's a turnover on downs. Yeah, I can see Coach going to Corey. Like they went with the smash concept there, and I think Coach wish he would have took the little stop route there instead of trying to get the corner. We'll send it to break. Tennessee Tech will get the football back with good field position. Defense served it up. 14-7, they lead it. You take a look at the MEAC championships, the success for Coach Buddy Pugh here at South Carolina State. Five shared MEAC titles, four trips to the FCS playoffs, and three MEAC titles. But I tell you, that 2021 season, man, where they started, what was it, one in five, then ran a rough shot through the MEAC and the Celebration Bowl champs over Primetime Dion and Jackson State. What MEAC title do you think he holds closest? What one do you think means the most to him? Or maybe a couple seasons as South Carolina State gets a big stop in the backfield. Boy, they needed that as Tennessee Tech got the ball back off a turnover on downs, stopping the Bulldogs. But what do you think are some of the years that he kind of holds dear to him that mean the most to him? Or are they all different in their own way? I think they're all different. I think that 21 year was big for him. But I was blessed to be here with him in uh, 08, 09, and 10 when we were able to go to the FCS playoff three years in a row. We played Appalachian State twice, and then we went to Georgia Southern my last year here. And we had some pretty good teams then. We had some good football players back at that time. 
Here is Pagese getting free at midfield. There is a flag down as he gets into Bulldog territory, just shy of the 45. 11.41 remains in the fourth quarter, but this could be coming back. See what the white hat calls here. Personal foul, hands to the face. Defense, number 43. Oh, personal foul, hands to the face. You heard it there. And that's going to tack on more yards at the end of the run. That is a big penalty there in that situation. Mm. That is a backbreaker for this defense who has played so well, minus the opening drive to start the third quarter. The Bulldog defense has played outstanding. But let's see if we can point out the penalty here. It was hands to the face. Yeah, it was. Uh, that was Godbolt on the lineman. Here's Pagese. Squirts through Pagese. inside the 30. He's a very shifty, elusive running back. Second down and five. And this is tough here for the Bulldog defense. You know, you just feel like if Tennessee Tech is able to go up two scores, that really feels almost insurmountable with the way the Golden Eagle defense has played today. Yeah, I think that would be tough. However, I mean, still got a chance here. Three wide outs, four down linemen. Potts going to roll to his right, throws, and that is caught by the big tight end. Still on his feet. Down inside the five for a first and goal. Oh, the big fella with a great grab. That was, didn't have him on my uh, starting board. That's Reese Perkins, a sophomore at a new Concord out of Ohio. First goal. Crunched in between three defenders and the balance to stay on his feet. First and goal at the five. Potts in the offense. Two receivers to the far side. It's a man in motion. Double tights there. Potts going to pitch it tonight at the five. Walks in for the score. The third touchdown of the day. Hat trick for Marcus Knight. Twenty to seven, pending the extra point. That's exactly how they scored the first touchdown. Yep, speed option. They found something they liked. They were able to run the speed option. South Carolina State just still hadn't had anybody to get on the pitch yet, and Marcus Knight been able to get in three times. So extra point for Hayden Olson. Snap, spot, kick, and that is good. 21 to seven, Golden Eagles go up two scores. The pitch tonight and walks in for the touchdown.
take a look at next week's games on the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN Plus. North Carolina Central at Morgan State. That's a 7.30 kick. And then you've got South Carolina State at Delaware State for a nooner and Norfolk State at Howard. Actually, it looks like that North Carolina Central Morgan State games on ESPN. Uh, was that ESPN U? So there is a boomer into the end zone for a touchback, and the Bulldogs will have it. 9.49 left. Plenty of time here, but it's this defense of the Golden Eagles that, I mean, let's just call it what it is. Take out the 90-yard catch and run by Jawarren Howell that basically just got behind the defense and used his uh, talent and ability. This defense has played lights out, near perfect. I think you said it good. I mean, it's plenty of time, but then it's not a whole lot of time. <laughs> it's going to actually take South Carolina State making a big play to be able to get a score here and to be able to get another stop and have an opportunity to come back and win this football game. Three receivers, one on the near side. Fields going to fire this one down the far side, and that is incomplete. Not a whole lot of shots taken today. And took one there to Nigel Johnson on the far side. You know, and that's one thing we haven't really talked about much you know, the front seven has been all the talk between On us coverage, with this Tennessee Tech defense. defense. But the reason Fields is having more trouble than anything is that the secondary has had these receivers locked down. Well, I think this hand and glove. I think in order for to be high in your pass efficiency, you have to have a good pass rush first, and then you got to have some guys that can cover on the back end. So Fields looking to throw again. And going to fire this one incomplete. Looked like somebody got a hand on it. He was looking for Keyshawn Tony. Third down and 10. The sun going back behind the clouds. Gives a shade back out onto the field. 9.35 left here in the fourth, 21-7. Bulldogs need something positive, need a jolt to get some momentum and get a drive back going. See Coach Buddy Pugh giving out the signals on the sideline. Fields back to pass. Looking right, throws over the middle that is caught by Tony. And that looks to be good enough for a first down. Keyshawn Tony. You know, when we saw him uh, make a couple of big catches, including a touchdown in that Citadel game, we were both sold. We got to see him get the ball more, and he might be the key here to slip behind these linebackers and make some big catches. Well, I'm still sold on that. I mean, he's the guy that definitely need to get some touches on the ball. Fields back to throw. Going to fire this one. Got a man, Jordan Smith. Oh, he couldn't hang on at the 20. Oh, had Jordan Smith. Rather, Smith had his man beat. Downfield on the coverage. Tried to make that sliding grab as we take a look at the cricket replay. Yeah, Jordan had him. That's one of those plays there that you wish mm. the quarterback just would take a little off of it. You know, you had him beat. The main thing is to be able to catch the football there then to make him have to do a dive and catch there. That's the play they needed, though. That's that, the that's, play they needed. That's what you were talking about earlier. They needed something like that. Maybe they can still get it. Second down and 10. Ball off the 36. Oh, here comes the pressure. Fields gets out of it, going to run at the 45. Midfield picks up the first down inside Golden Eagle territory. Continues the drive. That's a good job by Corey coming back. You get a chance to have a pitcher's mentality. You know, you throw a strike down the pipe and they hit it out the park. You got to get back on the mound and you got to be able to make a play. You got to make a pitch next play. Two receivers left, two right. Down the near side. And trying to get free. And, oh, and a collision. They're just shy of the 45 on the reception. And I think that was Justin Smith-Brown. Yeah, good to see him back in the game. I think that's his... Well, this is certainly the first series that he's been back since he got injured earlier in this uh, second half. Yeah, but you can see where Nyquan Washington came up and made a hit there towards the end of that play. Second down and eight. Three receivers. Fields. Back to throw. 
and gets this one out. No, intercepted, intercepted. I think Fields thought he was throwing it away, and it's an interception for Tennessee Tech. Oh, wow. Intercepted by Tim Kutras at a Nolensville, Tennessee, the Liberty transfer. Yeah, you can see Tennessee Tech bring the pressure there. I think Fields thought he was throwing that out of bounds. And the turnover is confirmed in the booth next to us. Wow, what a play. You know, I hate that play. As a quarterback, I think I feel for quarterbacks sometimes. You, you're in a situation where you want to make a play for your team, and you put that ball in harm's way, you know, and you're trying yeah. to make a play. And, it's, and as a coach, you want to say, just take the sack, and let's live the fight another day. But the kid's out there playing hard as he can find, trying to, trying to win a game for his team. Tim was kind of playing center field there and dropped right into his hands. Here is Pegues trying to get the edge. Aaron Smith there. A number of Bulldogs to get him, and they do. Loss on the play, but the clock is winding, 7.37. The Bulldogs are working against this Golden Eagle offense and the clock. And the clock. Now you're playing against two different teams now, and <laughs> that clock is pretty consistent. Loss of three yards. So loss of three on the play. To be second and 13. The they call it second and 13. Had a solid crowd today for Parents Weekend. It was also Community Day and Breast Cancer Awareness Day here at Oliver C. Dawson and Willie Jeffries Field at South Carolina State. A lot of pink in the stands. Pegues and Pegues the with the carry up to the 45-yard line. On the stop, number 11, Aaron Smith, also on the play. A lot of the South Carolina Tucker. State staff wearing pink as well. I think uh, our guy, this ID Kendrick, looks right. pretty good in pink. Yeah, Kendrick, like he went and bought him some matching shoes today. <laughs> uh, I like I, the look. I enjoy it, though. I enjoy the breast cancer awareness. And you, know, you know, the kids now, they really enjoy wearing pink now. Mm -hmm. you know? Third down and six. Well, it's a long five out of the shotgun. Two receivers. Here is the pitch. This is Pegues trying to get the edge. Cuts it inside at the 40. Looks like he just got the first down yard marker. Aiden Weber on the tackle for South Carolina State. And every first down is just a back-breaking killer for the Bulldogs' chances to get back in this game. Yeah, I think Tennessee Tech has found them a new play that they really like, and they really like the speed option. Potts does a great job of getting that ball out of his hand and getting it in some guys' hands that can really cover some ground fast. First and ten. And it's going to be a new back. Cuts it inside here. Still on his feet at the 30, down to the 25. And that's another first down run for Tennessee Tech. Well, when you're in this stage of the game, and a first down now is kind of like a point. You know, it don't go on the scoreboard, but those first downs, just you get a chance to just melt the clock and melt the clock. And that's the way that you try to end games, as a matter of fact. When offenses run their four-minute offense, the only goal you have is not to score. It's just get a first down. Yeah. And give me an opportunity or give the offense an opportunity just to melt the clock. That was Torin Baker on the run. It's going to be another run to Baker straight ahead. Follows his blockers, and they push him down to the 20. Baker, the ball carrier, on the and the, the I said it earlier in this broadcast, but the unheralded players has also been this Tennessee Tech offensive ball. line. I mean, they have done Baker. really a phenomenal job creating lanes and holes for the backs and protection for the freshman pots. Across that front, you got Trevor Stevens on the preseason watch list in the Big South OVC. Then Ellis Adams, Nate Hodnett, Wes Delk, Logan Weedman. And I thought tight end Hunter Barnhart played really well today. He's been more of a blocker than a pass catcher. 
So here's the handoff near side at the 20. Stiff arm forced out of bounds. It stops the clock. That's Pagis as Evans chases him out. Stops the clock. Check that. Still running at 345. And I'll tell you what, though. I will say this, though, Tyler. If you're a South Carolina State fan now, all sickness is not death. <laughs> and I think at the end of the day, this Tennessee Tech team is a lot better football team than what their record shows. Yes, they are. And they were a yeah. quarterback away from being able to be a pretty doggone solid football team. And I have been impressed with this football team, and I have been impressed with the way South Carolina State have came to play today also. Mm -hmm. Well said, partner. This is a very feisty, talented Tennessee Tech team that was just a quarterback away from playing well, and it looks like they found him. Here is Marcus Knight, the running back at the 10, forced out of bounds near the five-yard line. You know, talking to Ernest Robinson, the radio voice of the South Carolina State Bulldogs, he does a lot of research, talks to all these coaches. As you take a look at the cricket replay of that run by Marcus Knight, he told me flat out, he said, listen, all the guys, uh, the coaches I've been talking to, the research I've done, this would be an impressive win if South Carolina State can get it because this is a good football team. So echoing your thoughts as well. And it really is the defense that has been creating opportunities in the field position game. And this offense seems to have found a rhythm for the Golden Eagles. 2.28 left. Boy, they have killed this clock, haven't they? They I mean, have, and they've been able to run the football and get first downs and huddle and take a little time to get out of the huddle. 21 to 7, Tennessee Tech closing this one out on the Bulldogs on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN+. Plus. Twenty-one to seven, your score. Coach Dwayne Alexander trying to put this game on ice. Two twenty-five remaining in this one. This was a well-prepared, well-coached team in Tennessee Tech here on the road at Oliver C. Dawson. Handoff to Begee straight ahead, down inside the five. Begee's the ball carrier. On the stop for the Bulldogs, number eight, Aiden Weber. They give Weber the credit on the stop. Weber's been active in this second half. We've called his name a lot. Yeah, the offensive line, those guys up front, those tight ends. I mean, they've done a good job of just basically gap scheme blocking, zone blocking, and just doing 
winning pretty much the battle of the defensive line and the offensive line. Basically what it's come down to here this past two quarters. So 142 left, second down and goal. Ball inside the five. Going to hand it off to Begees, bounces it inside. Does he get in? Touch, no. They're going to say he's down at the one. Begees with the touchdown. Official. The official put the one hand up, but not two hands. <laughs> Third and goal. At the one. And South Carolina State not going to try to stop the clock with their three timeouts. And kind of an awkward position here for Tennessee Tech. Can't really take a knee here. They're just going to run plays. Under a minute. Potts takes a snap. Hand off to Begees. Lunges into the end zone. And there is your dagger. Tennessee Tech. Touchdown, Tennessee Tech. 27 to 7, pending the extra point. And that's the icing on this one for the Golden Eagles to improve their record to 2 and 4 on the season as we take a look at the cricket replay. Yeah, you see the ball come out late, but all it takes is one inch of that football crossing the, the goal line, and it's a touchdown. That's the first touchdown of the season Both for Justin Pagis. Point after touchdown. Snap, spot, kick, and that good. is good. We will stay here 28 to 7. Tennessee Tech, you know, we were talking during the commercial break. We were trying to figure out a team to compare this to that South Carolina State has played on their schedule thus far or will play. I mean, this offensive line might be the biggest they'll see all year. Maybe Georgia Tech, you know, you said Charlotte could be a comparable team. I actually agree with that. Um, but, boy, this is certainly maybe the best FCS opponent that they'll see this year. Well, I, I be, that might be safe to say, Tyler, but what I will say is this football team is a better football team than I feel like people think. A lot of times you look at records, which records really uh, don't signify how good a football team can be because you don't know who's had injuries. You don't know what has happened here or there. But when I saw this football team in warm-ups, and, and, and we said kind of it's going to depend on the quarterback play. Mm -hmm. And for Jordan Potts to come out and do what he did as a true freshman on the road, I think this football team a month from now is going to be a totally di different football team than they were uh, in previous months. Yeah, they'll be one to watch for sure. As they boot this one into the end zone for a touchback. You know, you talk about records not matter. I mean, you can look at this level of football and, you point out South Carolina State, who the first four or five games of the season, they'll play a Clemson or a South Carolina or, a, you know, Georgia Tech and a Charlotte this year. Not indicative of how good they really are. They can show flashes, which they did in those games. But it really comes down to when you play teams like this and then into the MEAC, right? Well, you go into South Carolina State every year. Your goals are to win the MEAC, mm -hmm. to go to the Celebration Bowl and win the Celebration Bowl. So no matter what happens today, all of your goals are still intact. That's right. So you have yep. to be able to find some good out of everything. Now, this, I feel, is going to make South Carolina State a better team in the future because this was a quality opponent, and this is a good football team. You know, I think their defense got better today, and I know the score may not indicate that but this defense really played hard and they saw a lot of different things offensively that they can be prepared for the rest of the season 48 seconds left bulldogs will have it for the final time possibly here is jawarn Howe with a big run oh my gets it inside tennessee tech territory at the 46 and that's what you want to see. You want to see your guys play to the end of the game. No matter what a score is, you play, you represent your university. And these guys are doing that. And that's a, a, a testament to Coach Pew. I mean, these guys never quit. And no matter what the score is, you continue to play each rep, you get better. Thirty seconds left. Curious if Coach P will call a timeout or run this out with another play. Looks like he's just gonna run the play here. So more than likely the final play of the game here. Down to 10 seconds. Handoff straight ahead, runs this one out. 
And that will do it. Tennessee Tech, the Golden Eagles come to South Carolina and they defeat the Bulldogs of South Carolina State. Tennessee Tech improves their record to two and four. South Carolina State falls to two and four as well. So our player of the game, we'll see some highlights, 28 to seven. As Coach Dwayne Alexander does the handshake with Buddy Pugh, it's Marcus Knight. And on the cricket replay, look at the game he had. Three touchdowns out of California, the Montana transfer. Well, you can go with him now, but I'll be honest with you, in a close photo finish, second place had to be Jordan Fox. So the freshman <laughs> came out and actually made some plays that got these guys going. So Marcus Knight is your player of the game here on ESPN+. Plus. Coach, final thoughts before we close it out. Well, like I said, I think South Carolina State take this game, go watch this film, and get ready to go into MEAC play. Uh, I don't think you'll see an opponent as physical and as big as this for the rest of the year. And to go out and continue to go, continue to work hard and, and do what you set out to do in the beginning of the year. So we'll close up shop here. Final score, 28-7 to for my analyst, Coach Demetrius Davis. I'm Tyler Cup saying so long from Oliver C. Dawson.